pastors, seminary students, and congregation members who are attending Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter, it is nice to meet you. My name is Tan Youngjin, and I'll be your host today. Since October 18th of last year, Shincheonji Church of Jesus has been hosting our seminar series titled Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant, followed by Testimony on the Parables of the Secrets of Heaven and Their True Meanings. The world's media has confirmed the teachings of Shincheonji and began to pay attention to its biblical testimony and growth. And about 1,200 pastors from 57 different countries from around the world have signed MOU with Shincheonji for the purpose of communicating with Shincheonji regarding its word. Starting with this seminar series, we plan to have a time of understanding the overall flow across the entire Bible from the Old Testament to the New Testament and the detailed process of how God's prophecies and His promise became fulfilled. I hope all of us will perceive when, where, through whom, and how God's prophecies became fulfilled along with their fulfilled reality and receive the promised blessings of heaven. As I pray and wish that we'll have a time of receiving God's grace and inspiration through His precious words today, let us pray together before we begin. Father God, the Creator of heaven and earth, we offer up all thanks and glory to You, for You have allowed us to receive the words of Revelation to understand the Old and New Testaments by chapter today. Starting today, we'll begin the testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter, which is our Mission Center's intermediate course. We believe that God and Jesus are with the Promised Shepherd, who will be speaking the revealed word on behalf of them. Please allow us your great grace for all to perceive the truth by hearing the testimony of the revealed word. Until we conclude this seminar, please be with us through your Holy Spirit, and we earnestly pray that you allow everyone around the world to receive the blessings of heaven and eternal life who hear this word. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, who is our life. Amen. Today is the first lesson of Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter Seminar. Chairman Lee Man Hee from Shincheonji Church of Jesus will testify to the words regarding the new heaven and new earth and the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony from the book of Revelation. Let us listen carefully to the words of the promised shepherd whom Jesus sent for the churches perceive God's precious will and secrets well, and enter the kingdom of heaven together. Now, let us welcome up our promised shepherd, Chairman Lee Man Hee, with a big round of applause. Yes, religious leaders from all over the world, greetings to all of you. I am Lee Man Hee of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. Today, the topic I will be covering with all of you is about the new heaven and new earth and the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony. God is a creator who created the heavens and the earth. Such a God is not within the world, but instead dwells far away in the kingdom of heaven. Why is that the case? This occurred because man did not keep the covenant made with God. Who then ended up being in charge of this world God left behind? What spirit to control? It is God's enemy, the deceiver, that is the devil who took control. Not only that, but death came upon all of humankind. 
This is truly a tragic situation. That is why God has been working for 6,000 years in order to recover what was lost and to inform everyone about what they did not know. Let's think about the flow of such a history that occurred. We are reminded of the days of Moses a long time ago. There were Jews who were insistently stubborn with the Mosaic Law. When Jesus came, however, they only believed in the Law of Moses and not in the words of Jesus. Why was that the case? Of course, if Jesus had just appeared out of nowhere, then of course no one would have believed. However, that was not the case. Before Jesus came to this earth, God foretold His words through several prophets in the Old Testament that He would send Jesus. Yes, that Jesus, the Son of God, was going to be born to a virgin, that He would be born in Bethlehem, He would enter Jerusalem on a colt, etc. And it was to this extent promises were made in the Old Testament concerning the Jesus who was going to appear. Jesus who appeared did so according to the promises of the Old Testament. The people, however, believed in the law of Moses, but not in the promises of Jesus and God. Why was that the case? And these people believed that their life of faith was all about being zealous in their faith and praying. However, they did not understand nor did they believe what God had promised in the Old Testament. That is why they did not believe in Jesus who came as promised. Jesus is the Son of God. Even still, they began to persecute Jesus, saying that he was a heretic. But who were the persecutors? They were the shepherds of Jerusalem, whom the world recognized as having the greatest of faith. The reason these shepherds in Jerusalem did not recognize or believe in Jesus was because they did not know the prophecies of God in the Old Testament, nor did they understand it. And thus, as a result, they did not believe in Jesus. This is truly unfortunate. Jesus is not a sinner. He is not a person born of the human seed. Luke chapter 1 explains quite well concerning the birth of Jesus. Didn't Angel, Angel Gabriel explain it very well? He explained very well that Jesus was the Son of God. Still, they did not believe and instead persecuted him and later even killed him. Isn't this extremely saddening? He was a righteous person born of God's seed and not a sinner. He was not born of the human seed. However, it was the sinners who killed the innocent and righteous Jesus. The cause of his death was because the people did not know or believe in the word of God promised in the Old Testament. This is why Jesus took the sins of the world and eventually left this world. However, Jesus, coming at the time of first coming, taking up the cross and leaving this world was not everything. God even recorded in advance what would happen after Jesus arrived on earth. 
Although God went as far as doing this, the people still did not believe. God even recorded that after Jesus is hung on the cross, they would cast lots for his clothing, but this was not even fathomed. It was even recorded in advance, the fact that Jesus would be given wine vinegar to drink, but the people did not know this either. Then it's pretty obvious what their life of faith was like at the time. Isn't that true? Have you tried thinking about these things before? The reason they killed the righteous Jesus, the Son of God, was simply in one statement because they were ignorant. They were so ignorant of the Bible. Even though they claimed to believe and believe well, those results appeared because they did not believe in God's promises. Isn't there something we know concerning the Old Testament Jesus said that he fulfilled and would fulfill? For God to create a new thing, a new work, he prophesied in the Old Testament concerning the sowing of two kinds of seeds for the creation of a new thing and the establishment of a new covenant. This is why after these things were completed, Jesus said, it is finished, correct? Jesus said, it is finished in John chapter 19 verse 30. Isn't Jesus saying he's finished because he fulfilled them all? Jesus sowed the seed, the seed of God according to God's word. Then afterwards, he took up the cross and died. Yes, he did. Then, is it only the planting of the two types of seeds that occurred? In Luke 22, verses 14 to 20, it says a new covenant was made because it was prophesied that a new covenant would be established. Therefore, Jesus completed everything that he had to come and fulfill. It was all done. He not only fulfilled the Old Testament, but everything else he had to accomplish too. So, on the night of the Passover, which all of you know very well regarding the Passover, correct? The Passover was a night at the time of Moses they were saved by eating the flesh of the lamb in Egypt. As a commemoration of that night, Jesus gathered his disciples together and explained to his disciples what would happen that night, including what would take place in the future. The Passover is referring to eating the flesh of the lamb and receiving salvation. And Jesus said that he would not eat the Passover meal again until the fulfillment of his Father's kingdom. He said this in regards to the wine, too. But what does this mean? Today, everyone says they are saved after drinking the blood of Jesus. But these people, they need to read the Bible again. Is that what he really meant? Jesus was slain on the day of Passover. And long ago, at the time of Moses, it was a real lamb. But the reason Jesus was called the lamb was because it was his flesh and blood that gave salvation, which is why he said he was a Passover lamb. The blood of Jesus, the Passover lamb, he said, would be eaten again at the time his father's kingdom is fulfilled. If so, hasn't it been more than 2,000 years since that was said? We must know then what it is that is fulfilled in the kingdom of the Father, right? Yes, it's concerning the new creation, the creation of a new thing. That's why Jesus shed his blood and also the reason why the seed was sown. No matter how much a person may boast of themselves, the Word of God does not change. And Jesus ended up passing away. The topic I said we would be going over is regarding the new heaven and new earth and the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony. What is the temple of the tabernacle of testimony? And what is the new heaven and new earth?
Shouldn't we also know what the first heaven and the first earth is? More than just worshiping in front of God, it is written that God wants us to know Him. It is written that God is a word, correct? According to scriptures, God wants us to know His word more than just offering up worship and sacrifices. The words God spoke, the words Jesus spoke, are the very words of God. Thus, we must understand these words. However, it is very difficult to understand. The reason is because many things were spoken in parables and figurative language. From God's point of view, though, He couldn't help but speak in parables and figurative language. The reason is because there is an enemy. If the enemy realizes all this, wouldn't he try to interfere? That is why all that is concerning the secrets of heaven were spoken in parables and figurative language. Yes, that is so. In the world of believers today, many pray fervently, believing they are carrying out a great life of faith, even attending church passionately, and even serving so diligently. However, What's even greater than these things mentioned? And what we must absolutely do is keep the promises of God. Yes, His words of promise. We have to be those who keep the new covenant that was made. However, what is the new covenant? That's the question. The world of Adam did not keep the covenant. Physical Israel also did not keep the covenant. This is precisely not doing the will of God. And as a result of not keeping the covenant, they were not able to enter eternal life. Thus, suffering came upon humanity. However, there is something we need to understand regarding the Word, and that is that the Old Testament has already been fulfilled. The New Testament, however, has not been fulfilled yet. But when Jesus returns, when the Kingdom of God the Father is established, that is when God will make it known to His people. At the time God makes all this known, will He reveal it to each person one by one? How will He reveal it? That's the question. Also, what is it that He will exactly make known and reveal? What is it He will make known to us? So, the New Covenant is the book of Revelation that if one adds or subtracts from it, they cannot enter heaven as a result. The book of Revelation is one book out of all the 66 books of the Bible, and it's the last book. It's also only a few pages long. However, even after 2,000 years since the existence of this book, no one has ever understood it to this day. Why didn't anyone understand? It's because this book was recorded in parables and figurative language. No matter how much anyone tried to figure it out, it was hard to comprehend. However, when this book can finally be understood is when the realities that were promised appear. That is when someone can say, oh, this is what the word meant, and can truly understand what the meanings are. Then, when reality to the prophecies finally appear, we'll be able to know everything by seeing the actual entities. So, until the time of fulfillment, since the book was in the right hand of God and sealed with seven seals, no one was able to understand it. However, now the time has come where God gave this to His Son, Jesus. Then, what will Jesus do after He receives it? Wouldn't He start to fulfill these things one by one? All the things that are recorded in it? Yes, of course He fulfills it. And when He does fulfill it, does all the people of the global villages see it? No, that's not the case. 
When it fulfills, it is one person who sees all that is fulfilled and hears the words that are spoken. Yes, one person. Those words are recorded in Revelation chapter 22, verse 8. Also, it is recorded in verse 16 that this messenger will testify to what he has seen and heard to the churches. Everyone, this got long because I was speaking about today's topic. However, I have one more thing to say to all of you. The 12 tribe leaders of Shincheonji explained everything from chapters 1 to 22 of Revelation to the entire global village and to religious people of all different countries. Everyone, have you heard it? I explained exactly what you already heard. Now then, for the elementary series. Even in the world, when we start studies, preschool-age children enter into preschool where they learn and study. Then they learn to study in their first year of elementary school. And eventually, they go through the same steps to study until graduate school, correct? So is the knowledge concerning God. Our elementary series has now been sent out into all the world. We have spoken about all the chapters in the book of Revelation, and we have sent out all 24 lessons of our elementary series. Therefore, everything will be completed in a few days. But now, there is an intermediate series that is left, which goes into chapter studies. But that does not mean that all chapters of the Bible will be explained. Among them, 24 topics will be selected, and one of them is what I will be explaining today. Once you listen to the content the 24 lecturers will be explaining here, and comparing it to what you know, you will see what parts are the same and what parts are different. And, I hope you will all listen and remember which one is certain. Of course, you will also perhaps record this too, and perhaps you will listen to it again. You might be able to contrast it with the Bible and with what you have heard. So, once the elementary series are over, we will go over the intermediate series. If the word is compared to like bread. What did Jesus call himself in John chapter 6? Didn't he say that he was a living bread from heaven? Yes, living bread. He said he was a living bread, but does that mean we could just tear off and eat his flesh? Jesus said those words figuratively, in parables. Then what kind of bread is he? Definitely not the bread we eat with our mouths. It is a bread we can eat through our ears. Yes, the bread eaten through our years. However, for us today, the book of Revelation is something we have already seen about 2,000 years ago. And no matter how much we try to understand it, there was no way to know. But at the proper time today, God has made this known and is sounding the trumpet in every country around the world so we can break this bread and eat it together. If one eats alone and is the only one with this wisdom, then what's the point? That's why it should be shared. This is why this is Jesus' bread. That is what he said. Thus we must eat the spiritual bread and gain eternal life. Before we begin with the intermediate series, I'm standing here just to say a few words. The title I gave earlier was concerning new heaven and new earth and the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony. This is what I would like to speak about. What I wanted to explain prior was regarding Jesus. How before he started to fulfill the prophecies of the Old Testament, and when he arrived, he explained the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies. He not only explained the fulfillment of the Old Testament, but also prophesied about what would take place in the future. And afterwards, he left. Then this Jesus was not the person he once was. 
Jesus had to arrive in order to testify to the reality of the prophecies themselves, give the prophecies of the New Testament, and even fulfill the Old Testament. Today, the book of the New Testament that we have to understand are prophecies given by Jesus. Yes, Jesus prophesied them. Since it was Jesus who prophesied them, then it is only Jesus who will know these prophecies well, isn't, isn't it? No one else will know. Dear pastors, do you know? Did you know all these things? We didn't, correct? At the first coming, however, Jesus was here in flesh. He came in flesh while God came in spirit. However, at the time of the second coming, just like we see in Revelation chapter 1, He arrives in spirit. Yes, a spirit. Jesus returns a spirit, selects and appoints a person to speak on His behalf, has Him see everything and hear everything, and testify to His words. For example, in Revelation chapters 2 and 3, this person, who comes as a parable of John, the new John, sends a letter to the seven messengers. It was not Jesus who sent it directly to them. Since Jesus commanded him to write and send them the letters, he wrote it and sent it. Hence, he is a messenger who speaks on behalf of Christ. Today, uh, a long time ago, Jesus also was a counselor who spoke on behalf, a messenger. Today, however, Jesus needed a person who could speak on his behalf. However, this messenger never does anything that Jesus does not command him to do. But what he is commanded, he does exactly what he's told. Yes, that is so. So the leaders of the 12 tribes sounded the explanation to the book of Revelation like a trumpet to the whole world. No one understood the content of Revelation, nor was there ever a time it fulfilled in the past. However, it fulfills at the second coming of Christ, and seeing what fulfilled at the time of second coming is what the leaders of the 12 tribes are testifying to. To the whole world. I'm sure you know this well from hearing it for yourselves. Today, we will go into something different, that is, the explanation to the chapter studies of the Old and New Testaments, which is what I would like to explain to you. And that is the content of New Heaven and New Earth, the Temple of the Tabernacle of the Testimony. The word New Heaven and New Earth is found in Revelation chapter 21. And the word Temple of the Tabernacle of the Testimony is found in Revelation chapter 15. Yes, however, although many might have seen the written words to those prophecies, they have not seen all of its reality, correct? Also, many have seen the written word, the Temple of the Tabernacle of the Testimony, in the Bible, but they have not seen or touched the actual place, correct? Yes, that is so. Also, new heaven and new earth can be seen in the written word itself, but many have not seen the reality. Everyone, if you listen carefully to what I'm about to testify to, and you perceive, you will be able to see both of these things. I'm not going to speak of things that does not have a reality. You'll be able to see them. On the day you see them, you'll remember these very words I've spoken to you today. From the time of Adam to this present time, about 6,000 years have passed. However, the content we see in Revelation chapter 21 could not be understood. Also, Moses existed in the past and he created what he saw in heaven here on earth, correct? However, the city that is in heaven now is not the same city in the days of Moses. It's a new thing with the letter new attached to it. That is, the New Jerusalem appeared. It is called the New Jerusalem because it did not be, it's not the same place at the time of Moses. It will be different from the old one. 
However, what does new heaven and new earth mean? It is written that the first heaven and the first earth will disappear, and a new heaven and a new earth will appear. Then, from where does first heaven, first earth begin, and to where does it end? It starts from the time of Adam until today, meaning the heaven and earth of 6,000 years disappears. But how? It will disappear like the way it's mentioned in Revelation 6. After it disappears, the new heaven and a new earth is created. Since this is huge, it could be hard to believe. Of course. It's hard to believe. However, the promises of God never changes. Thus, we must ask ourselves, what is the first heaven and the first earth? What is the new heaven and the new earth? Have you seen its reality? I have. Yes, that's the case. That's the difference. Therefore, the first heaven and the first earth is everything that has existed since the creation of the world until now that will be destroyed. There is also the saying that a new heaven and a new earth will appear. There is also a saying that the end times will be like the days of Noah. And at the time of Noah, didn't Adam's world disappear? And it was only Noah's family who survived. If we think about this for a little bit, it does make a lot of sense. At the time Revelation fulfills, Jesus, who was put to death, will return and fulfill this book of Revelation that he promised. However, looking at Revelation chapter 21, it is written that the first heaven and the first earth passes away, and a new heaven and a new earth appears. This means just because someone comes and says things like new heaven, new earth, does not make that person a heretic or a sect. When words are spoken according to the word, it doesn't make those words heresy or a cult. The words new heaven and a new earth that I spoke is according to the Bible. In an era of the new heaven and new earth, I'm not saying things that are not in the Bible. Yes, that's so. Does that mean it's the things of old or the things of the new? Yes, it's the things that are new. The things of old is the first heaven and the first earth that disappears, and since the new heaven and new earth appears, it is considered the things of new. It's not the things of the past. Yes, it's the new heaven and new earth that appears at the time of revelation fulfillment. It's not the things of the past. That also means it is a new era. Furthermore, there is a saying about the Temple of the Tabernacle of the Testimony written in the Word in Revelation chapter 15. When will the Temple of the Tabernacle of Testimony be built? In Revelation chapters 2 and 3, it is written to overcome, to overcome, and finally, in Revelation chapter 12, there are those who overcame. Where do those who overcome gather? They gather in front of God's throne, where the sea of glass is at. What does that mean? In front of God's throne? God's throne can be seen in Revelation chapter 4. However, in that chapter, it is written that at that time, God's throne will come here on earth. If He returns, where does He return? And where does He stay? When does He come? After those who overcome appear, God's throne appears and returns there. This is why those who overcame in Revelation chapter 12 gather at the throne of God in front of the sea of glass in Revelation chapter 15. In addition, it is written that all nations will come and gather here to worship. Since God is spirit, we cannot see Him. Furthermore, God's spiritual kingdom cannot be seen with our eyes when it arrives since it is a spiritual kingdom. However, the Bible shows us when and where God returns. And it says that all nations of the world will come and worship here. Should we see these words and not believe them, thinking it's a lie? Of course not. It's true. We will not be able to see spiritual things with our eyes. However, wouldn't those who overcome be clearly visible? 
who fought whom in Revelation chapters 2 and 3. With what did those who overcome win? That's clearly shown in the Bible. It says, they fought and overcame with the blood of Jesus and the word of their testimony. And they are those who have gathered in front of God's throne. Since all nations gather here to worship, wouldn't they come here to worship because God is there? Everyone, we must listen to these words deeply. That means God dwells with those who overcame. Yes, God does. If God is with these overcomers, will it go well for them or not go well for them? Where these righteous overcomers dwell is where there will be growth. It will grow rapidly. It will go well there. Yes, it will go well. It will grow rapidly. Reporters from all over the world have asked me about this. They wanted me to share with them the secret to our rapid growth. Wow, how can I teach them the secret? Simply put, it goes well with us because God is with us. That was the only thing I could say. Nevertheless, even if I explain this in detail, how will the reporters who do not carry out a life of faith even believe this? However, in reality, what we see is that these overcomers have gathered before the throne of God and all nations come here to worship the presence of God. So, shouldn't we know this Bible? It's because people do not understand, which is why they say things that are not true. If people didn't know, then they would not need to ask questions and they will consider what they already know as everything. Thus, rapid growth or not, it's a matter of whether God is with us or not. That's something to think about. Long ago, God was with Jesus. But did Jesus speak the truth or did he speak lies? Didn't they call Jesus a heretic at that time? Didn't they say he was a sect, so let's kill him? However, was he truly a sect? However, why is it that we do not call him a sect today? Jesus, that is. Since people were following Jesus at that time, what did those who went against him do? According to Matthew chapter 23, these pastors blocked the kingdom of heaven in men's faces, and they themselves did not enter either. This is what it was like back then, 2,000 years ago. Isn't that the case today? These people who persecute and prevent others from going are the group of Satan. They are Satan's pastors, are they not? When people start to gather, there is something unique and interesting about it, which is why people come together, right? People search and come here whether it was because they found out God was here or because they realized that truth is here. That's why they come here. Why else would they? Furthermore, they probably came, come here because they perceived their church did not have the truth. They're thinking, oh my, I'm hungry. Please give me something to eat. Because there's no food or spiritual food at their church, they will come to the place with plenty of food. Why is that so bad? It's not that the place people come to here that is a bad place. Instead, it is a church that doesn't have the truth that is bad, correct? Why is there no truth there? It's because there's no God. Because there's no God, there's no word of God there. People are searching for a place with food to eat because they're so hungry. Look at the animals on the mountains. They all roam around looking for something to eat. Whether it be the creatures within the waters of the world, or the animals of this earth, or the birds of the sky, they all go around searching for food. We should lament the lack of food and the lack of truth in our churches today. Is there such a reason to persecute and curse those who go around searching for food to eat to survive? What is rapid growth anyways? It's what happens being with God. It is being with God and the word of truth coming out because God's there. Thus, in order to eat spiritual food, that's the word of truth, people run over here after knowing this. 
If one is going to come, then everyone should come too, including the pastor. Isn't that correct? Without the word, there's nothing that can be taught. Also, without the word, people run away from there, so what's left after that? People will leave even if they're captured. Please think about that. We need to know these natural principles. Openly cursing, calling out heresy, heresy. What kind of person loves saying that word heresy so much? When they saw Jesus a long ago, they called out heresy, heresy, but was Jesus truly heresy? He was truly the food of eternal life, right? It's the same today. There's food that endures to eternal life. So people are gathering to eat that. And there are people who are cursing and persecuting those who are going there. Isn't that what's wrong? They curse day and night as if the devil has captured them and keep dropping them or something. Cursing and persecuting like this doesn't change anything. We have to think about these things. Let me say a word and ask a question to those kinds of pastors. Pastors, how do you differentiate between the sons of God who are born of God's seed and the sons of the devil who are born of the devil's seed? Pastors, please give me an answer. It is not right to not know how to differentiate between the sons of the devil versus the sons of God. The sons of God should be called the sons of God, and the sons of the devil should be called the sons of the devil. We can't just call anyone the devil, just like those who saw Jesus and called him that too. Are we going to be the same way today? Pastors, please answer me. Please tell me, who are the sons of the devil and who are the sons of God? Will you be able to answer? If one cannot answer, then you cannot call just anyone the devil or a heretic. If one doesn't know but calls just anyone the devil, calling out names, saying they are a heretic, it's wrong. Who's a cult? It's the foolish dummy that's the heretic. It's those who testify other things to the Word of God who are the heretics. The Bible is made where only what is seen and heard is testified to. The Bible is meant to be spoken of what was seen and heard. But there are those who have not seen or heard anything and yet they speak made-up nonsense. They just speak what is written in commentaries while the Bible is sitting somewhere else, somewhere else in the corner. Why? They just teach the book of lies that's man-made. Commenters, is that doing a good thing? Pastors, please tell me. I just don't understand why this is the case. How can one distinguish between the sons of God versus the sons of the devil? Please let me know. Someone might ask, do you know? Yes. I do. I do know. How do I know? In Matthew chapter 13, verse 24, Jesus planted good seed in his own field. However, when everyone was sleeping, the devil also planted the devil seed in there. And both seeds grew together. Until when? Until the time of harvest. The time of harvest is the time of Jesus' return. But these two grew together. At the time of harvest, Jesus returns together with his angels and takes with him those born of God's seed, but not those born of the devil's seed, just leaving them there at that field, the church. Those who are taken, as shown in verses 37 to 39, are the sons of God, born of the good seed. And doesn't it say that the weeds are the sons of the devil? If that's the case, the weeds born of the devil seed are those who remain in the field, and those who are harvested and taken from the field are the sons of God, correct? This is how we know. It doesn't make sense to not know these things. These words are also the words of Christ. Are you going to say that these are lies, that they're false, and that this is also heresy? Then why do we even have the Bible? Might as well just throw it away then. Let us distinguish this clearly. Let's discern between the children of God versus the children of the devil. It is recorded that the scriptures cannot be broken according to John chapter 10, verse 35. Are you going to throw the Bible away? Let's be people of certainty. Do not name call people saying they are the devil saying they're a cult. What will happen if one calls someone else a heresy, yet they themselves are the heretics? 
One should not call others a cult when they themselves cannot discern. The devil would just laugh at that. This is why we should not do such a thing. Thus, those who are harvested and taken are those born of God's seed, and those who are not harvested and remain are those born of the devil's seed. This is how we distinguish. Shouldn't we believe this? Can anyone say this is not true? Let's please think about these things. Currently, we are living at the time of Jesus' return, at the time of harvest. We just went over the new heaven and new earth. But not about the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony yet. The temple of the tabernacle of testimony is just as the word states, is a tabernacle that testifies. What's testified to? Since it is a temple of the tabernacle of testimony, it's a temple where the Lord dwells. However, what does this place testify to? It is also shown that this is a place where the overcomers of Revelation 12 have gathered. They are the ones who fought and overcame the seven heads and ten horns of the group of the dragon in Revelation chapters 13 and 12. The reason why this place is called the Temple of the Tabernacle of Testimony is because these people who fought against the beast, that is the seven heads and ten horns of the group of the dragon, overcame them and came out, and thus they saw all that happened. We, mo we most likely know what the devil is, right? Yes, they all know who Satan the dragon, the beast is, since they fought the group of the dragon, in 13, fought the number of his name, overcame the image of the beast. They come out from there and gather in front of Revelation chapter 15. The place where they gathered being called the Temple of the Tabernacle of Testimony is because they saw all the events of Revelation. They saw all the entities who appeared in Revelation, and thus they can testify to those entities. Then, since when did the Temple of Tabernacle of Testimony appear? Before the Overcomer appears in Revelation chapter 12, this place didn't exist. It's after the event of fighting and overcoming the group of the dragon that those who did, those who did became the Temple of the Tabernacle of Testimony. Since they saw the events of Revelation, since they fought the group of the dragon and came out, think about how well they will know these events. Thus, it is a tabernacle that makes known what happened. The name of the tabernacle is not simply like making up a name for a child, but instead, there's a huge and deep meaning within that name. Yes, the name, Temple of the Tabernacle of Testimony. It is at this Temple of the Tab Tabernacle of Testimony where all the events of Revelation are seen. And afterwards, fighting and overcoming, the Temple of Tabernacle of Testimony begins to exist. This is not like the churches of tradition that existed before Revelation begins to fulfill. What will happen to the churches of tradition at the time of Revelation? Isn't it recorded in Matthew 8, verses 11 and 12 that the churches of tradition will be kicked out where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth, and there will be those harvested from the east and the west who take their seats in the kingdom of God? Yes, that is so. The temple of the tabernacle of the testimony is created at this time because it is a tabernacle that testifies to the events of Revelation after the appearance of the Overcomer. Also, the new heaven and new earth does not exist before the events of Revelation, but it appears after the events of Revelation that must fulfill takes place. And this temple of the tabernacle of testimony appears also because a beast has been fought and overcome. Therefore, we have to think about what it is we need to know. Within Revelation, it's not only the new heaven and new earth that exist, and it's not only the temple of the tabernacle of testimony where the hymn overcomes is gathered that exists either. Instead, what is seen is all the fulfillment of the prophecies in Revelation chapters 1 to 22, all the realities that appeared.
We must not be those who do not know even when these things are fulfilled. Although the Old Testament was all fulfilled, the Jews did not believe even to the point of putting Jesus to death. However, what fulfills is what fulfilled. And it has been 2,000 years since Jesus left prophecies. If the fulfillment can be testified to today, doesn't that mean the realities have appeared? This is something we must know. Up to now, we share the elementary series, but now we'll be sharing the intermediate series. We also share the revelation series too. What must we do then? I have always asked this question. Who are we according to scriptures? Have I been recreated according to the scriptures? I ask these questions a lot. If we were truly created according to the word. Because the time of Revelation is a time of recreation. When the book of Revelation is fulfilled, it's a time when the previous era comes to an end and a new one is created again. It's an era when a person's heart, thoughts, and everything are all newly created. That's why I say it's the era of recreation. Thus, at the time of recreation, the pastors and the congregation of the previous era are not saved in that condition. There's not a single one who can be saved like that. There is no salvation since revelation was added and subtracted from. These words are not my own, right? They are the words of Jesus. He said one cannot enter heaven if one adds or subtracts from revelation. So in order for us to not add or subtract from revelation, shouldn't we hear, confirm, and believe all these things from the one who has seen the prophecies and fulfillment of all of revelation? Correct? Yes. We must confirm and believe. If we don't know, we should ask someone who knows, correct? From where? From the temple of the tabernacle of testimony is where we should ask. Since I have seen everything, we must go there to ask, confirm for ourselves, and believe, right? God has set everything. And there is a person who has shown all the events from Revelation chapters 1 to 22. We will also be able to understand if we ask this person, let's not fall into our own understanding and suffer, but instead ask someone who knows. So when one era comes to an end <clears throat> and a new era is created, that new era that is created is the new heaven and new earth. The first heaven and first earth passes away and a new heaven and new earth appears and that's where the holy city, new Jerusalem in heaven comes down upon. Where God comes down and unites with according to Revelation chapter 21, correct? That place is the temple of the tabernacle of testimony. God unites and dwells with this place. Yes, where the one who overcomes is at. Thus, the evidence concerning the fulfillment of Revelation must be heard from those who overcame in Revelation 15, and people must come and hear it at the temple of the tabernacle of testimony, right? Yes, they must. That's when they can be a true believer and become one who perceived. Thus, pastors should learn this word and make this known to their own congregation. Then the congregation will enjoy it so much. Yes, they'll jump up and down for joy because they'll love, they'll love it. Until now, these words have never been taught by anyone in the world. But within these words contain the blood of Jesus and the life of Jesus is contained in these words. If we receive and eat these words, we can drink the blood of Jesus and receive and gain life and attain eternal life. Let's truly remember this one thing, shouldn't we? I was able to share with you content of our elementary series, including the intermediate series. Intermediate series would be good as well. If you do not agree with something, please write it down and ask questions to us, letting us know what parts you do not agree with and what you believe the answer to be and why. Those who will share the intermediate series with you are those who have all of the New Testament scriptures recorded in their heart, even the content of Revelation recorded in their hearts too. They're pretty much a walking Bible in the flesh. 
They do not just offer lip service saying they believe or act like they believe, but they are those who truly have the words sealed in them, like a seal stamped on them. I ask you to please listen well, and let's all enter God's kingdom and live together. Truly, everyone, do you believe? I truly thank all of you. Yes, we are currently lacking time, but we should do one thing, right? We are one in God and Jesus, correct? Then let's all shout together. We are one. Yes, thank you. Let us give another round of applause of gratitude to the chairman who gave us such a precious testimony today. He said that the book of Revelation is being fulfilled today as Jesus promised, and we must correctly know and understand its meaning in order to recognize the reality of the new heaven and new earth and the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony. Through the future seminars, I hope everyone can clearly understand who we are according to the Bible and fulfill our hope of heaven and eternal life. Let us offer up a prayer of gratitude to God. Our Father God, the Most Holy, we give you all glory for giving us the words of revelation through our promised shepherd, chairman, and for your great grace of allowing us to perceive the reality of Revelation's new heaven and new earth and the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony. Any believer who believes in the prophecies and fulfillment of the Old Testament should also believe in the fulfillment of the New Testament prophecies testified today. Please guide every soul who hears these words, perceive the prophecies and fulfillment of the Old and New Testaments, and become the people of heaven. As the testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter is testified through the lecturers of our mission center, please let every person around the world be sealed in their hearts, perceive, and believe to become the true believers. Let us all become one within your truth and guide us to perceive the blessings of heaven together. We pray all these things in the name of our Holy Jesus. Amen. Now, let's watch a short video about the upcoming Intermediate Lesson 1 together. God definitely fulfills what He has prophesied. God's been doing His work filled with blood for 6,000 years to fulfill the book of Revelation and create the 12 tribes. Therefore, let us understand the prophecies recorded in the New Testament, keep them when they are fulfilled, and reach our hope together. Shincheonji Online Seminar is being broadcast worldwide simultaneously in 24 different languages. If you have any questions regarding today's lesson or anything else regarding Shincheonji Church of Jesus and our teaching, please don't hesitate to call the number on the screen. We'll make sure to guide you kindly and answer with details. We'll conclude today's Shincheonji Online Seminar with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as if also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you everyone for being with us today.